Voice is a little shot today, but it's not going to stop me from talking about Kaguya-sama Love is War, which is, honestly, this is one of the best episodes that Kaguya-sama has seen to date. I think I'm a little biased just because it's had such a great version of Kaguya. This is, if you compare early Kaguya to what we just saw in this episode, it's literally night and day. It's complete difference from what we've ever seen. This is the most precious, this is the most wholesome most in love character that we've seen her to date and it was precious and I love how anytime they do like a connecting story arc between a handful of little stories that we see from window shopping to celebrating a birthday to then the aftermath of said birthday it just makes it feel like there's structure and just it's organic it feels like it's day to day and even though a lot of this could be considered episodic just kind of lovey-dovey adventures with some pretty insane comedy it doesn't change the fact that, honestly, it feels connected as if the longer you watch, the longer you see the characters grow and develop. And honestly, this is one of my favorite episodes of Kaguya-sama. And I'm not just saying that because it's been a while since I've seen the first season. I've seen the first season three times. It's really well done. I love it. It's my favorite comedy anime. So I'm pretty fresh with what my favorite episodes are, but honestly, this is one of my favorites. I think just having Kaguya really steal the spotlight for pretty much the entire episode. Sure, we get some Yu's, sure, we get some Chika. Chika had some great moments, and of course we have Miyuki, but honestly, this was Kaguya's episode, and she hit it out of the park. Honestly, she just struck it, like, home run guaranteed, and it was great. Starting with window shopping, something that she was trying to do forever to get some understandings of what Miyuki would like from his sister. And I love how it's very hard for Kaguya to adapt to, like, normal social situations, because... She kind of grew up in a very luxurious lifestyle, and I love how the sister is literally just Miyuki. Same attitude, the same way she conducts herself, but of course they're always going to butt heads because they're siblings and very similar to each other. And that's what makes it really special because you just see our girl trying so damn hard to just say, hey, I'm going to do everything I can to get some alone time. I'll say, what would he like? How do you celebrate birthdays and Christmas? And I love how the way they start bonding is because they both are just exhausted going shopping. They're just like, oh, this is just not my normal lifestyle because for her, she doesn't spend a lot of money because the way her family is. And for Kaguya, people just naturally buy her things. It was really great to see how they just like sort of started to bond and it felt like, oh, they're already on a first name basis and she's just really flustered and embarrassed. And then you see the most Miyuki thing ever, a kid about to trip and just putting himself in harm's way or her in this case. And I love that because literally she's pretty much thinking I'm going on a date with Miyuki because this is literally the same person just in a female's body. And it was pretty great to see that, especially because, like, they really cutes it up after that, because it was pretty clear that they were going to be friends. Like, maybe she doesn't blend in with some of the others as well as she does with, say, Miyuki's sister, but it's really nice to see at the very end how, basically, they're all going in for a hug, and she's just freaking out. She's being like, you're using your body to seduce men. Not a man, but, you know, she's just very lost in thought that that's literally her crush, just in a different form. And then she just kind of gets roped in to be all cutes and adorable. Like, that was some of the funniest and most wholesome content I've seen in Kaguya-sama in quite some time. And that's just, this show's amazing for that alone. But the thing that really ties it together is I love how they didn't just go from window shopping to club room, classroom activity. They went straight into the birthday. And the birthday was actually the least funny part of the episode, but it was the most wholesome. She's literally having a court session in her head about what she should do. She literally makes him a wedding cake, not a normal cake, a wedding cake, and anyone with a brain is going to be like, that's too extreme, especially for someone who doesn't celebrate birthdays or Christmases because of the financial situation. You throwing a wedding cake not only is going to send mixed signals, it's also going to just be like, how much money did you spend, and are you just like flaunting it in my face that you have more money than me? You wouldn't want to do that. So I love how she has like these few versions. You have literally the most adorable version of Kaguya, who's literally just a girl madly in love. You pretty much have a child saying, uh, just say you're the present because I'm a child and I don't think things through. And then you have like the really stern saying, hey, you'll find a better person someday who will actually match this, but also be more financially capable. But at the end of the day, it's always Kaguya. Kaguya has to make the decision and that's what's really great i love how they are actually kind of setting it up to be a lot more serious and dramatic as if oh shit like what is she going to do is she going to say i'm the president is she going to give the cake is she just going to turn away and walk away is she going to set herself back from this relationship which is honestly progressed incredibly well so it's really great to see how instead of just like abandoning what she was going to do she made a compromise a single slice and it was the most romantic thing ever especially because she gave him a fan 
that she did the writing for herself. And that's just like, you think you've seen some adorable shit in Kaguya-sama, and then you see embarrassed Kaguya give Miyuki a slice of cake, romantic lighting, the sun is setting, and this boy's just like, I've never experienced this. And you're not laughing, you're just melting from the adorable. And honestly, that could have been the episode. That would have been a great episode, because honestly, it had a lot of familiar moments to the season finale of season one where you're just like man things are just happening so well they're progressing so much and it just feels great but then they give you the aftermath and that's where it gets back to being funny i love how chica her addition could be so easy to mess up it really could it could just be that character who just is like love triangle aspect just a random annoying personality there's a lot of ways to make that addition really annoying but the fact that she is just like you know hey are you in love with Kaguya? Because why would you tell her your birthday but not me? I actually thought Kaguya messed up because she's like super madly in love. She cannot think straight. So I thought maybe this was the moment that she actually messed up. But the fact that she put it in her head before they got to the club room so she would attack him, he would be like, oh no, she'll attack her because he'd be like, oh, why did you do all this? Do you love her? And just that entire back and forth I was like, what the hell are we seeing? Because it was ridiculously funny in classic Kaguya-sama comedy. But the fact that Kaguya was so distracted from the fan and watching him cool himself off that she was so distracted she couldn't do shit. Had you not walked in, the cat would have been out of the bag. And as I always say, I'm glad the cat's not out of the bag. I'm glad that the joke is remaining and that they're being super adorable and just so ridiculous that they will not admit their feelings because it makes it all the funnier. Like in a lot of ways, this is moving slower than a lot of rom-coms in terms of progression, but it also is moving a lot faster because both know, but they're also trying to get it out of the other first. So it makes it have this such weird aesthetic and appeal that you just can't help but love. And I really love how you, this man, you don't see him a whole lot in this show, but when he pops up, he just says something and usually he says it how it is while also being scared of Kaguya. I love how he got the precedent of birthday present and then just threw it in her face being like, you didn't know? How shameful. And she just runs out of the room. This show is such a delight. I mean, I'm totally expecting it's going to get delayed. I mean, pretty much everything's getting delayed in this season. It's really unfortunate. But every episode that I watch of Kaguya-sama, I'm going to appreciate. Because not only does it feel like because we know these characters a lot more, it makes the jokes and situations all the more memorable and impactful. But also, it just makes me laugh or melt in awe and love, and I'm just like, this show is so flawless. It just feels like they're still finding new ways to take the adorableness and crank it up a notch. Like, that pure innocent Kaguya face where she's literally just jumping for joy because she's in love is the most precious thing I've seen in this show to date. And I have to say, the opening song is amazing. The song itself is good, it's fine, like, I don't hate it, I don't love it, it's just a good song across the board. The visuals, though, are pure adorableness. I was melting seeing some of just like the arrows flying and how there'd be like a love deflection shield or just some of the faces that the characters would make. They definitely brought their A-game for that opening, and I'm loving it. I'm never skipping it, that's for damn sure. It's just too adorable. It's not one of those opening songs you just kind of listen to in the background. You gotta watch it with the visuals because it's just that good. This really was, though, Kaguya's episode. Like, not only visually was it just hers to stand out with such a range of faces, her voice actress was so pleasant. This literally felt like a teenage girl in love, but with so much pride. But that love was seeping out non-stop that she could not resist just saying how she felt. And I still love the wingman mechanics where her maid will be like, hey, you know, just she wraps her up and is like, hey, that's the present. And she's just freaking out. It is cute, though, too, because Miyuki was like, oh, shit, is like clothing coming off. Like he was thinking of some real kinky things were going to happen and then he was so much more happy with the piece of cake because not only has he never had that it's just literally the most precious and adorable thing you can do because by all rights of the definition they should be dating already but the fact that it is a comedy series that's entire point is like once they do confess there would be a lot less to do they still can like i always still say like they could go to college or something like that and be dating and still have like these little bickers but it feels to me like Kaguya-sama is like once they confess you get a little bit and then the show would wrap up in the manga. It's just great though. It's just so precious. It feels like the quality is better than last season. 
And last season, I was already saying it's my favorite comedy anime, so it's saying a hell of a lot that I'm already loving it more than season one. And that's a, that's a pretty big feat, especially only two episodes in. This really just was one of my favorite episodes of Kage's Helmet Love is War and has me even more excited for the future of season two. But as always, let me know your thoughts and opinions and favorite moment out of the three for this very wholesome and adorable episode. Do let me know. If you enjoyed the video, be sure to leave a like, share your support, and remember to hit that subscribe button if you happen to be new around here. So until next time, everyone, please take care and have a good one.